we're waiting for the crucial non-farm payrolls report due out in just a few hours from now to look at what we can expect and indeed the impact that it could have, particularly in the markets, given events of the past few days. I'm joined by James Knightley, senior economist at ING Bank. James, good to see you. Yeah. So uh, what sort of uh, growth are you expecting in jobs in July? Yeah, I think actually we're looking for quite reasonable job growth. Um, if you look at the Bloomberg consensus over the last week, it has fallen pretty dramatically, pretty much in line with genuine market, market sentiment. At this time last week, the market was looking for a rise of 110,000. It's now looking for a rise of only 85,000. We'd be at the top end of that range. I think in general, the labour surveys have been pretty good. ADP employment's up. The ISM employment components are okay in growth territory. And I think also, if you look at what happened last month, we got a surprisingly weak number when all the labour surveys were pretty good. And the labour surveys have held on to their reasonably healthy levels. So we'd be hopeful that we might get some catch-up as well. So uh, we, we see some upside to today's number. Oh, you do? OK, so you're, you say that you're on the strong end of 85,000, but I suppose many traders, investors, will be treading with caution given the measly 18,000 that we had the month before. Yeah, I mean, the payrolls number has disappointed the last couple of months, but if you look at the historical trends between the payrolls report and all of these labour surveys, it, it tends to, to converge. And given all the labour surveys have been OK, OK to pretty good, um, then I think there is pretty good chance that we do get some catch-up. So uh, we positioned for, for a slightly stronger number today. Yeah, but even 85,000, even if it does come in at that amount, I mean... Think back, what, a few months ago, three months ago, remember when we were talking about 200,000? And then remember when we said, well, it needs to be at 200,000 or above in order to bring the unemployment rate down significantly? I mean, it doesn't seem like we're anywhere near that now. No, I mean, it's, it's certainly reflective of the soft patch in most of the economic data we've been getting over the last two or three months. So it sort of really just confirms a story of ongoing subdued growth. Uh, but as your previous guest stated, there are some, some reasons for optimism still. Uh, the gasoline price effect will be helping. Uh, credit conditions continue to improve according to the Federal Reserve's Senior Loan Officers Survey. And mortgage rates continue to move down. The 30-year fixed rate mortgage is down to just 4.45% after being well above 5% in the early part of this year. So there are still reasons for some comfort and, you know, as the tsunami affects some wine from the Japanese suppliers, then we'd still be hopeful of stronger growth in the second half, albeit still pretty tepid relative to the, the trends over the previous decade. I mean, significant turmoil we've seen in the markets over the past week, concern about slowing growth in the US, but really uh, global growth overall with a raft of wheat data. Can you still say with certainty and with confidence that we will see the necessary rebound in the second half, that that will in fact materialise and feed through to unemployment in the US? We can't be certain about it, but I think there's some supportive factors for the growth story. Um, you know, there's still talk about potential QE um, as well as another round coming through there to provide some more support. I think it's pretty unlikely we've had further Fed officials such as Dennis Lockhart from the Atlanta Fed suggesting there's a very high bar. That bar has probably been lowered a bit by the, week, by the events over the last week. But uh, certainly I think, you know, their view is still growth to pick up, albeit modestly, in the second half. And I think that's still our house view as well. All right. So, I mean, are you saying that more QE would help? There should be QE3. That, that would boost job growth. Well, not necessarily, because I, I think, you know, the, the, the effectiveness has been somewhat uh, questioned. Um, but I think, you know, in terms of the recent equity market moves, um, it may be well be supportive. Um, but again, as I said, there's still a very high bar to that. And I think there's still reasons for optimism, because there is going to be significant stimulus from the declines in oil prices and commodity prices in general, and also from, as I say, improving credit conditions and lower borrowing rates for households. All right, good to talk to you. Thanks very much, James Knightley, ING.